the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast, powered by Web Gains. My name's Joel Osborne. I'm joined as always by the partner in crime, Sam Hardy. Sam, how's it going? I don't like you calling me a partner in crime, Joel. <laughs> they might find us out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? Uh, we've got producer Dan over there as well, the third partner in crime. Dan, how's Hello. it going? Hello. I'm also a partner in crime. I like that. We're like a three-way in crime, aren't we? To be fair, if we were going to do something, uh, some criminal action, Dan would be the best one to hide the evidence, I reckon, Joel. What do you reckon? I, I, I definitely agree. We <laughs> do all the mischief and Dan just looks professional. <laughs> I'd be the guy in the truck telling you which air vents to go through. I've got a big map in front of me i think i'd be the guy in the truck Absolutely. you are the nerd yeah we get it yeah <laughs> great stuff <laughs> uh obviously another busy week with all things uh flyers we had two games last week uh we split them so we had the win in poland woo followed by the defeat against sheffield Woo. Ooh. uh we'll talk about well actually we probably won't talk about sheffield later on in the podcast because it's a quite a busy busy podcast this week but um we, we had some really good feedback from our podcast last week against uh, well our podcast last week where you went out to poland and took it on the road it was amazing well, i didn't see any feedback what was it uh, it was it was good feedback obviously people were loving the amount of fresh waters you were drinking throughout the uh the podcast as it slowly progressed into a drunken abyss no my lawyer has told me not to <laughs> <laughs> accept that as a as a real thing joss so i disagree no it was great uh if you haven't had a chance to listen to it or watch it back on youtube yet i would recommend watching it because it's very very funny indeed uh go watch it on the bristol flyers youtube channel it's still up there uh you can do all those podcasty things that podcast hosts tell you to do like comment subscribe all of that jazz uh, and yeah we bring you episodes i was gonna say we bring you episodes every wednesday but we kind of mix and match the days of the week really haven't we we like to keep people guessing i suppose if you if you're too consistent people get comfortable you know we want to try and push people out of their comfort zone a little well, bit Joe. well we try and do episodes every wednesday and then all of a sudden we might have a game on a thursday or a game on a friday or a game on a wednesday we can't do it so um i'm gonna stop saying they're coming out every wednesday and they'll come out every week you just got to guess which day it's going to be according to the schedule but you can probably guess what day is going to come out because it's a game a, a, a day where we don't have anything yeah. so this week obviously we have uh, Caledonia on Thursday it won't come out on Thursday it'll be out on Wednesday so <laughs> so, uh, so yeah that's how we're going to do this podcast from now on uh, great stuff uh, coming up on this week's show we've got a great interview Sam uh, we actually recorded this interview a couple of weeks ago with the British Basketball League's head of marketing Joe Edwards what a gen isn't he such a good guy yeah he really is uh, obviously I speak to him on a week by week basis uh, with the British Basketball League uh, we actually break down the league's new rebrand and obviously we wanted to have, uh, have him on the podcast for quite some time now we spoke about it a few times saying look you know once the league announces its rebrand let's get him on the podcast let's talk it through uh, and we did just that we spoke about everything including not saying the well trying not to say those three letters the B uh, the B and the L <laughs> one thing I'd say about the uh, who we had three of them come down. Or would it have, do we have four? Who who came down? Elliot came down, yeah. the league's head of commercial, and yeah. Anna Jones and came Anna down came, as yeah. well, the uh, league's head of communication. One thing I'll say about all three of them: cracking shoes, Joel. They all rock in some sort of like Nike something something. But oh really? All, I didn't yeah. notice. Did you not? No. You love shoes as well. I, know, I do. I'm a bit of a shoe nut myself. I didn't notice. You'll have to that, get them to reach out to us, tell us what they were wearing. But they were really cool, Joel. You missed out there, bud. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have a look next time I see him. But they came down to watch our recent game against uh, Manchester Giants. And like you said, we wanted to have him on uh, for the pod for quite some time. He obviously talks us through uh, the process of what goes into rebranding a, a league. And uh, we were also able to get an exclusive peek, Sam, at what could have been the new British Basketball League rebrand. Never been seen before. We got an exclusive peek. The new rebrand, I'm glad. We will look at it in a set, but I'm glad we went to the, with, they went with the decision they went with. Um, the other one was cool, but but I actually quite love what they've done. But you'll hear all about that in the interview with Joe coming up shortly. Yeah, well, let us know what you think about it as well, because we're going to show this, uh, what could have been the, the new league rebrand. Let us know. You can tweet us. Uh, I say tweet, X us at Bristol Flyers. So uh, let us know. Uh, should we get straight into it, Sam? Yeah, let's go for it. Right. Uh, without further ado, uh, here is our interview with the British Basketball League's head of marketing, Joe Edwards. This 
is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hey, Flyers fans. We want to say a huge thank you to our sponsors, WebGains, who help make this podcast possible. WebGains is an affiliate marketing network who bring businesses and affiliates together to grow and succeed. The Bristol Flyers are all about teamwork, and that's exactly what WebGains are about too. They're like the assist that helps your business score big. Are you an aspiring entrepreneur or have a business of your own that sells products online? If so, WebGains is here to help. They connect businesses with top affiliates from cashback giants like Top Cashback to niche bloggers in your vertical who can promote your products and services, reaching a wider audience and driving more revenue. And here's the slam dunk, Flyers fans. WebGains provides you with detailed reports and analytics to track the performance of your affiliate marketing campaigns, making it easy to see results of your hard work and investments. Whether you're a local business or an international brand, WebGains has the expertise and network to take your marketing efforts to the next level. They're passionate about helping businesses grow, just like we're passionate about our team's success, Sam. So if you're ready to skyrocket your online presence and drive more sales, visit webgains.com and see how they can assist you in scoring big in the world of affiliate marketing. That's webgains.com, W-E-B-G-A-I-N-S.com. Give your business the assistance needs with WebGains Affiliate Network. This is the Bristol Flyers Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Bristol Flyers Podcast, and we are very pleased to be joined in studio by none other than the British Basketball League's Head of Marketing, Joe Edwards, in the studio. Joe, how's it going? Yeah, really good, thanks. Thanks for having us on. It's uh, looks like I'm glad you've also managed to get the logo in down there. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> good work. Well, good you, work. You, are, you are more than welcome. It's great to have you here with us uh, in the studio. Um, it's your first time here on the Flyers podcast, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, have you, are you, is the Flyers podcast a regular part of your podcast listening? Is it yeah, on your rotation? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty much on rotation. Yes, yes. Joel, we made it. We yeah. made it big the, time. The league are keeping tabs on what we're saying to make sure we don't say anything we shouldn't, yeah, Joel. I mean, <laughs> we'll probably get into the three-letter acronym at some point in a little while. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get into it now, okay, fine, uh, fine. because uh, we do have to warn you about a rule, which I'm sure you, if you're a listener of the podcast, you'll know. Um, and uh, every time someone on the podcast, and normally it's just for Sam and I, uh, but every time someone on the podcast says the three letters, the former abbreviation of the league, the yep. B, the B, and the L, uh, they have to read... allowed, is it? You that's can say allowed, it like that, yeah. but you okay. can't say it as... Okay. Yeah. Uh, so every time someone says that, uh, they have to reach into our forfeit bucket, which is on standby over here uh, in the corner, uh, and, and read out a forfeit and do it on the show. However, I feel like this is the one... We've been good, haven't we, Sam, the last few weeks? But I feel like this is the one episode where we may struggle because we are talking a lot about the British Basketball League rebrand. <laughs> you, th- uh, the thing is... What what I'd say is we've got done three times, and then I don't think we've been done since, have we? It's been good, a good few weeks, a good few weeks. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, it's just I don't want any more forfeits. Some of them no, are pretty bad. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you we might been... have to get naked. Yet. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see this. This is a this is a PG podcast. I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but Joe, welcome to Bristol. Uh, welcome to the Flyers podcast. Uh, just for the Flyers listeners, just give us a quick intro as to who you are, what you do at the British Basketball League, and what your role in on a day-to-day basis yep so uh, I think you've done the Joe Edwards bit head of marketing at the British Basketball League um, I uh, work across everything marketing um, particularly last year probably worked a little bit um, across content but that's kind of now we've brought in this in-house production team just working a lot more closer with the with the production team um, what that entails I think is everything from ticketing social media PR and comms um, and yeah, but building the team as well to to make all that stuff work and, and possible. So just a small job there, mate. Nothing major, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of challenges ahead, but they're good challenges, and I think uh, I feel quite privileged to be working in a sport I love and and trying to grow this league in our country. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And right. and you've been in the role uh, not not for too long now. Just tell us when you first came on board so at the league. I came in six weeks before the start of last season. Um, and had to yeah, get a campaign up and running to launch the season. I think that was like a, a big mammoth task and was really grateful for actually all the teams kind of getting on board and helping making all that possible. Um, and then I blinked and it was the end of the season. <laughs> uh, we'd done the playoffs um, and we were into the off season and then it was all about what are the things that we need to get set up, the rebrand, which I know we'll be talking about, um, yeah, so it's been busy and it, it's just not 
easing up, which is good because it means that we're growing and we're pushing hard to, to like I said, turn this sport into something epic in the in the UK. Yeah, and just to throw and it, beyond. Yeah, and and just to throw it back to when you did first start. I mean, we talk about the Know Our Name campaign back then, and that was such a quick turnaround, wasn't it, to when you first yeah. came on board to yeah. actually launch that properly yeah. and get it. It was only a few weeks, right? Yeah, it was. It was. It's probably the fastest I've ever turned any campaign around in my career. I always like to think you've got like you know a good three or four months to do the planning, get everything ready, and and then push go on it. But uh, we're lucky, you know, we work with some really good partners, uh, partner agencies, um, to make it all happen. And then obviously everybody was really uh, welcoming, you know, all the all the clubs to just help make it happen. So it's, it's actually, lucky. You're doing a great job, by the way, because I uh, think I was already following the um, social media accounts, but only in the since in the last season also you know last season and this season have i really been um following it but and i will go to your page to look at what you're doing because you're doing some really cool stuff um on social so yeah appreciate it man yeah well, thank you for that um i'd say that's nothing to do with me and a lot of hard work from jamie thomas particularly last season and and now jamie yeah we've got this kind of in-house content team that are I mean, we can do a whole lot more and do a lot more storytelling around, you know, all the personalities within the league. So it's been really good. Really yeah, good. you mentioned storytelling yeah. there. And obviously uh, a big thing that Aaron Raiden has been, been been pushing this season is yeah. the storytelling part of the game. It's But it's not only the players, it's the backroom members of staff. It's, it's yourself, for example. And this is a great opportunity for fans to learn more about you and kind of the work that goes on behind the scenes uh, at the British Basketball League. Um, and it's incredible. I mean, just I guess just before we delve into the, the stuff you're doing right now with the yep. league, let's learn more a bit about your background because, you, like you say, you're no stranger to the game of basketball. You've come uh, through the ranks and you've got previous experience, the likes of uh, DAZN and, and FIBA Media as well. Yeah, yeah. So... Um a potted history of basketball as I started playing about the age of 10. Um, and a uh, bit of a weird story. I was doing trampoline in at the time, kind of thing you do as a kid, <laughs> right? Um, and my best mate turned around to me and said, oh, I'm going to go and try this thing called basketball. Do you want to give it a go? And I had to kind of make a decision between trampoline or basketball. And safe to say, I, I didn't get a professional career in either of those. <laughs> um, I'm not in the way, not as a professional player at least. But um, yeah, I've always loved the sport. Um, you know, did a coaching qualification when I was young, coached my the girls' college team, now run a youth club. We got like 135 kids um, as part of that as well. So, yeah, I mean, basketball's a, a mat, yeah, just my real sort of sport and passion, which is cool. Yeah. i got mixed feelings about trampolining. I feel yeah. like it's got its ups and its downs, and it's just yeah. so... Hey! <laughs> Bouncy <laughs> trampoline-based joke there. Yeah, you're not a dad yet, are you? <laughs> not yet. I think I'm getting ready, if that's the sort of stuff I'm coming out with. That was good. I'm definitely taking that one back home to my kids. <laughs> Amazing. Great stuff. Um, and then, yeah, career-wise, um, uh, came out of university around about the time the dot-com bubble burst. Couldn't get a job for love nor money, so set up my own web design company. Did that for a few years. Um, then got into the marketing game, kind of went client side, then went over to agencies, worked on lots of big brands, which was a lot of good fun. Um, some technology, automotive, entertainment, that sort of stuff. Um, then got poached by a client um, and ended up working on global campaigns for them. And then I saw this job come up for FIBA Media. Um, and... It, you know, it's probably the only job in the the UK that had basketball in it that I felt mm. like at, the, at least at the time with a marketing title. Yeah, and um, went went for the role, and you know, I knew nothing about sports marketing then, um, but convinced them somehow that uh, you know, with my passion for the sport and and then my my knowledge in marketing, yeah, bluffed my way in basically, um, and that was part of a Dazone joint venture. So that's how I kind of worked with Dazone. Um, ended up working on a few other rights holders within DAZN as well, which was a lot of fun and got to learn a few other sports. Did that, uh, did the World Cup, was really fortunate, spent a bit of time with likes of Stefan Marbury, um, wow. which was quite good fun, and met a few of the big NBA uh, players as well. Do you want to drop some names or? That's the I'll only pick other it up. one. That's the only <laughs> one I'm dropping. That's the only one I'm dropping. <laughs> Got it. Uh, you, you can have it back. Um, there's plenty of others, but I won't bother. Come on, just um, one more. One more. Nah. Oh. I'm in the same room as Kobe, but that's good. <laughs> oh, there, okay. there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the greatest uh, of all time. Yeah, yeah. That was quite quite an experience. Um, but you should be shell shocked at that. A bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was, it was um, like going to China where the World Cup. World Cup was it's just surreal because it's a completely different culture I mean 
Steph, I spent quite a bit of time with him because he was one of the, our ambassadors for the for the World Cup, and the crowds just went mental for him all the time. It didn't matter where he went. Um, they were just screaming his name, mm. which was which was mad. That's so cool. Yeah, it was. It was a really co- really cool um, kind of part of life. Um, was Yao still playing then or not? No, he was another one of the ambassadors actually. But yeah, he was around obviously mm. um, as part of it. Yeah, really really cool. Um, then went off um, and worked in triathlon for three years, Super League triathlon. Again, a real different experience. They definitely had. Um, trying to push the media angle of what they were doing because if you watch Iron Man, you're watching one guy sweat for about 11 hours, not the most exciting TV. And they, like a lot of sports rights holders, were trying to work out how to be a bit more media friendly. And they created a format that made it a lot more fruit media friendly and how to watch it. But they also had quite a big participation angle um, on what they were trying to do as well. Um, and then, yeah, I was kind of watching, as I always have been since I was this high, um, you know, what was going on with the league, uh, saw, you know, the investment that was coming to, into the league. And I was like, I'm sure there's going to be a marketing role there at some point and just managed to uh, dig it out, sent my CV across to Andy Webb, who is a star. And, and um, yeah, again, blagged my way in. And here I am now. Yeah. Go a good shout out to Andy Webb, by the way, because he has been there for a long time, yeah. even yeah. before the investment. And he literally was the go-to point of contact back in the day for everything. I mean, honestly, he still is. You yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the Oracle, uh, yeah. you know, he should be called for sure. Yeah. And am I right in thinking, um, are, are you still doing this now that you're a, a non-exec director for Reading Rockets? Is that right? Not really doing that at the moment. Yeah. No, no but started off doing that for a little while. Um and you know they've grown. They've brought in a new kind of marketing guy that can dedicate a lot more time to it. So so yeah. But oh, you know, obviously watching what Rockets are doing, what Matt Johnson, um, mm. who's now turned into CEO over there, and yeah, seeing what they're doing in the D one league is really really cool. I, I look at Reading Rockets for example, and I look at Bristol Flyers, and they're a very. I mean, we were both in NBL Division yeah, One together, sure, sure. and you know, th- I feel like their only investment away from making that jump into the British yeah, Basketball yeah, League. Did, is, possibly. Do you think they're that far away from entering the British Basketball League? I know expansion has been a big thing for the league going forward. Yeah, I, th- I think, um, you know, with uh, with all the the people, the sorry, the clubs that want to kind of come in and enter now, I think a lot of it's around making sure that you've got the foundations in place to deliver it. And I think Reading Rockets have got the foundations in terms of the community there for sure i think there's obviously some work to do as you said like they're a step or like an investment step away from from um from maybe doing it but yeah i don't, I don't know yet i don't have the inside track on that one yeah well let's talk about bristol flyers We've got you here on the uh, the bristol flyers podcast and uh this isn't your first visit to see us here in bristol because you came uh, down here to ashton gate when you first uh, were appointed didn't you yeah that's right i'm well, the big thing for me was when I started was trying to get to meet everybody and I wanted to do it as early on as I could because I could use it as a way of learning what everyone was doing but also I didn't have to make any promises quite yet um, and so therefore it kind of makes the relationship I guess a little bit easier and I, try, you know, I think I managed to get around about seven clubs in three weeks which wasn't too bad going yeah oh, that's a me- I mean, you've been, must have been knackered after yeah, that I mean, I'm constantly knackered I've got two young kids it's, just, <laughs> it's a given um, that's good no, I love that as well because also no one likes a, like an email that they from someone who asks them to do something who they don't know at all yeah. do they yeah so. exactly so definitely tried to yeah build the relationships early and again I think some of that helped the success of the campaign um, back then as well um, and I've also come down to watch a game Yep, that's um, right. As well, I'm going to see tonight's game as well. Looking forward to that. Yeah. At the time of recording, it's Manchester Giants tonight at the SGS College Arena. A whole bunch of you from the league coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got um, Anna Jones, who's on my team, who uh, heads up comms and PR, and um, Elliot, who's our um, um, commercial director. What are you making of the, the Flyers, the organisation as a whole, I guess both on the court and off the court, yeah. like the direction it's going in? Uh, I mean, I'm loving the direction. I've also, I mean, I uh, definitely have a soft spot for you guys. Coach K, I, you know, like I just love his style, um, his approach. I've been fortunate enough to spend a bit of time with him as well. Um, I think he's a, a lovely guy and your entire story from where you've come from to where you are now and the new stadium, um, I mean, I can't wait to see that new stadium 
Um, I think that's going to be epic. Neither can we. I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. I lie. We have been waiting. So. <laughs> what's, what, what, what's, that, what's that mean from Titanic? It's like, it's been 84 years. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll be in there. We're just getting through a last hurdle now, yeah. which is taking longer than expected. Yeah, but fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, good things aren't generally easy. So yeah. you've got to get over these things. But I'm getting it's going to be great. Getting it deep getting here on the, deep. On, the, yeah. on the old podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, Jack. Yeah. Like That's that right. Uh, let's dive into the British Basketball League. And, uh, of course, one of the you mentioned uh, at the top of the show, uh, one of the first main tasks you had in your hand was to, to build a team. Yeah. Uh, where do you go about even starting with that kind of thing? And tell us, like, who's on the team right now? How many have you got in the office? Uh in my team specifically, I guess I guess both because I, the marketing team yep. is a very small cog in a big wheel yeah, right yeah, now sure. across the whole business. If you're going to ask me to name every employee, <laughs> I'm going to struggle. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but what I can say is, on my team, you've got um, and, and where did I start? I mean, when I came in, um, Jamie Thomas was already there in a freelance capacity, um, and he does um, the social, he does, he does social all and the social media. And is he employed now? Yes, yeah, fully, nice. fully employed. Brought him on. I mean, he did an he. He does and is still doing an ama amazing job. Mm. Um, like, and he's also a bit of an oracle too. Uh, you know, there isn't a person he doesn't know or a play that he hasn't watched. Yeah, um, <laughs> gotta know. give him a huge shout out. I'm, I'm literally on the phone with him like most, most every other day, um, and he's a great guy. Anything you need, he's there for you. Uh, no, no task is too big for yeah. Jamie Thomas. Hundred percent. You're just content nerd. You're like, oh, have you seen this reel? Oh, have you seen this TikTok? <laughs> just talking about TikToks and reels <laughs> yeah. and Instagram, isn't it really? <laughs> so yeah, you got Jamie Thomas, and then. Um, we brought in Anna Jones. Mm. Anna, um, I'd actually worked with in the past, but again, we went through the through the complete interview process with with everybody. We, but we brought Anna in. Um, she's been great <clears throat> picking up on PR. You know, our numbers have like trebled since she came in. So I can't 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 argue with that one. Yeah, uh, I, I love the I love the legal political thing you added in there. Obviously, we went through the proper protocols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, obviously, 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 obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Um, and how can I forget Paige? Yeah, of course. So Paige, Paige is a ex London Lions player. Yeah, um, and Paige is our marketing assistant, which means that she does a little bit of everything, like literally a little bit of everything, supports the team, um, and is also helping Elliot with commercial uh, and helping run a lot of the campaigns for us. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what Paige does, and then you've got kind of like the operations and events team. Um, I'd say most of those guys are up in um, Leicester. Um, you've got um, so that's like headed up by Andy. You've got um, Claire who does the events, Jamie Press who does um, the league administration, and then you've got um, Natasha um, who is help doing team services. And that's really as we've grown as a league, we really need to make sure that we've got somebody there that's kind of point of coordination and liaison with all the teams and, and and in all the areas that we're trying to support the teams going forward so that's anything from our marketing efforts um that will be game day experience and kind of trying to co coordinate um all of that so yeah that's good yeah and then you've got the entertainment team and that's all the content guys so those are the guys that are doing all the live production doing all the features that we're creating do all the social media content so i spend quite a lot of my time briefing those guys in saying this is what i need for marketing whether it's ticketing promos highlight reels for social media uh the campaign assets that you'll see come out uh, those are the kind of things where i'm liaising with them and then they've got the kind of editorial piece that they're layering in on top of that um or we, yeah, above it almost to be honest with you with the, with all the storytelling that they're doing um and that's probably it there's mm. kind of three core teams i guess i love that you've got um your base in london but also your base in leicester it feels like there's you know it's good to have a sort of place that people can sort of if they need to come and visit they can but also you're not just in the capital doing that thing it's spread around the country yeah. a bit you know yeah. what i mean yeah I, I think that's good as well i mean i Definitely think moving into London has been helpful, particularly from a commercial point of view. That's kind of where all the brands are going to be that we need to talk to, to kind of bring into the um, bring into the league. Um, it's where the studios, which I know Joel, you've been down to kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of a number of times now, and it's quite cool actually having that office there, right next to the studio as well. You really feel like you're in the mix with it. Um, so it's good fun. Yeah, I'll often go down and do some work before I do a commentary game. So I'll just go down early and just bash out some emails and stuff in their office out there. And a bunch of their guys are in our office today, for example. So it's all like sharing, sharing space, sharing best practice, sharing ideas. Cause that's what it's all about. All about sharing growing the game. Is sharing. caring. Sharing yeah. is caring. It is. What's it like? Um, 
working with Aaron Radin because, of course, uh, we all saw his, um, you know, his interviews in the public about the yep. ambitions he has for the league. But tell us what it's like on the day to day with him. Yeah, I mean, Aaron is an incredibly uh, experienced, uh, highly astute individual, and who I have a lot of faith in. Um, that he's going to kind of deliver on a promise, and I feel like I've probably put a whole load of weight on his shoulders. But he, <laughs> quite frankly, he he knows, and he's he's um, you know doing a great job uh, already in in some of the initiatives that you know he's been driving forward. The, the U.S. broadcast that's come in, for instance, and how we're monetizing that, and he's really looking at everything from a kind of product angle in terms of. You know, what are we doing to delight fans? Because if we can get the fans um, on board, and you, you see that in the way that you know we've changed the way the content's being produced and the live broadcast is. So he's really, really super focused on that. And then obviously, like, how are we going to drive revenue for the league? Because that's only going to help the league and the clubs to grow everything and then in turn grow the sport and, you know, make this the second most popular sport in the UK to, to spectate, which is where we want to get to. Yeah, uh, and if you want some interesting, slightly geeky stats, um, yes, they're good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's what we're here for on the uh, Flyers podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we. I was looking at a study by Ernest and Young recently that says basketball's the fourth most popular sport in the UK by by Gen Z. Mm -hmm. I, saw, I saw that, and, the other and, week. and that is that's a great signal to me that that we're you know we're joining the path almost at the right time. And I think even you know I talked a little bit about. Um, like I run a youth club, you know, a marketing guy that's done no marketing has it grew from eight kids five years ago, seven years ago, whatever it might have been, into 135, and I've done nothing. I've done no marketing at all. So it just goes to show how much the sport is growing and developing um, in the UK. How do you manage that with 135 kids? Uh, I don't do it by myself. <laughs> it's the key. It's the key. I've got a great bunch of guys that help make it happen. All focused around basketball. Yeah, that youth, yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. cool, my man. Yeah. He's killing it, isn't he? Yeah, it's and, and I think also one of the massive things that's helping the the next generation come through. And it, I know it's not technically your remit, but the digital side of things, the media side of things, yeah. everyone can just watch highlights at the touch of a fingertip. You know, at the end of, the, of your phone, and that is what the league's really honing in on right now. It's the content, it's the broadcast, yeah. it's that it's that first impression you see when you watch a British basketball league game. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Stupid saying, but fish where the fish are, right? We've got to be there. Um, uh, yeah, even Aaron has spoken in the past about, you know, we're an entertainment organisation. Um, so we're, yeah, we're up against other sports, but we're also up against Netflix and Amazon Prime and everything else that's going on in the world right now. It's a battle for attention. And, and so, you know, being where our fans are is table stakes. And then on top of that, we've then got to go and produce a world-class product and do that storytelling so people can understand who the personalities are and build that build that connection. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's such a it's such a well-oiled machine and when you really break it down into its little bits, it's really uh, insightful. I think it's really interesting for fans to hear about as well, isn't it? Zach? Well, I think I don't know if this is right or wrong, but you're not we are we all support our team. We all work for our team, whatever. I've got the fans and so this is our thing and it's us versus the other teams, us versus Manchester, us versus London. And in a way, not that you're a separate team, but it kind of is it does sometimes you gotta remember we are part of the same party here, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And and actually meeting people from from the organization, from the league is actually a really good way of going, No, we're all working together for the same thing, but we can also still hate Plymouth and whatever along the <laughs> <laughs> I think I think like <laughs> I think, um, yeah, like collaborate like crazy in the back office, yeah, and on the court, go at it like hell, yeah. And I think as long as we've got that mentality, I think we're all going to grow together. Yeah, and we've started seeing that now. I mean, we do monthly uh, calls in the marketing and media departments for each club. We've done a couple in person, yep. albeit my rubbish bowling skills. We uh, can work on that. Yeah, <laughs> we can definitely work on that. But it's that collaboration which I don't think we've necessarily seen in the league uh, previous, like prior to seven seven seven. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just, you know, frankly, it's just down to resource and t time right now. Yeah. Now we've got more people in the league, we can facilitate that and um, kind of thing. It's been, yeah, eye opening for me. You know, working in FIBA, um, you know, I was working in, I helped FIBA understand how to deliver global campaigns, and it was. 
the learning was the different levels of maturity amongst the national federations and how you can help help support them in different ways. So I'm kind of trying to take that model, but it doesn't just mean that, oh, I'm I'm here to learn from you guys as well, because there'll be other clubs doing things in other ways uh, that we can go and show some of the other teams and that's the, the whole collaboration piece, but also stuff I'm learning from a league point of view as well about, you know, how can we approach things? How can we do things differently? So, yeah, we've all yeah. got to work together. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, well, we're doing some uh, presentations through the clubs very soon and uh, I've been nominated to do one on social, about all things social, but there's presentations going on between the clubs on everything from game night experience to building culture to social to like things like ticketing and commercial as well. So it's, it's really, it's, that's, you know, ha having that in place has yeah. been huge for, ev yeah, for everyone. Yeah, play player welfare on you was another one of yeah. them, which I think is massively important too. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the projects you've been up to um, yeah. since uh, being in place. And obviously, we mentioned the Know Our Name campaign when you yeah. first came on board. And this past season, the big one has been the Unbeatable rebrand. Yeah. Um, talk to us about it because uh, obviously it's a brand new look. It's a new feel. It feels like it's Lily's going into a new era. Just where does one start with rebranding a basketball league? Yeah, um, where do you start? Well, you start with your fans and you also have to look inside and try and understand who you are today and where you want to be um so there was actually even before i started there was a whole load of internal workshops done amongst the league and some of the clubs around where we are today and where we want to be um and obviously that research got pulled together there was a company called delta tray that supported us with that and they also did a whole load of um desk research around audience sizing and beginning to understand who our fans are and then beginning to work out what are the segments of those fans and where should we be approaching uh, or which ones we should be approaching where's the kind of lowest hanging fruit that we can kind of kind of go after and i think the other element of it was there's obviously a lot of history in league um but we felt that you know the the current branding that was there didn't necessarily put us into a position where we wanted to be approaching a new audience to grow to grow our audiences so yeah, we spent a lot of time doing quite a lot of research i think that was the first bit that then helped us form a brief and we went out to probably 10 different um brand agencies um, we asked for all their credentials. We then whittled those down to six that we asked to then pitch. And basically we got that six down to to one. And we, you know, we spent probably a couple of hours with each agency doing these pitches. We did scorecards with them. So we kind of knew what we were looking for out of each one of them. Um, and we shared those scorecards with all the agencies so they could see how they did as well. It's important to give that kind of feedback. Um, and we ultimately ended up with um, design work and design work didn't actually show us a logo. I don't think they showed us even a logo at the time. All they did was showed us directions that we could we could go in, but they built it all off of this unbeatable brand. Um, so that it was kind of like the overarching creative proposition was about being unbeatable. And when they talked about it and they talked about it's not in its literal sense. It's about the mindset. It's about the lifestyle. It's about, you know, when you guys go, go on court and you play, you always feel like you're unbeatable as you step on that court until the point you get blocked. And the, but then, <laughs> but the, well, until I you get experience. Yeah, yeah, I'm unbeatable, experience yeah. unbeatable until you get beat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the, point, the point is is that then you get back up again and you've got that mindset not to worry about it. Run down court again and go and play your game. And, and it's that. It's, always, it's about not being beaten. Mm. Um, and um, frankly, when they talked it through, I got goosebumps. And I think that's probably the first time I've ever been in a pitch situation where I've got goosebumps from the way that they, they talked about uh, what we wanted to do. And, um, and I've been, you know, agency side pitching as well. So I've not ever, ever managed to get a client quite <laughs> there. But, but anyway, so they did a great, great job. Um, that's ballsy, isn't it? Turning up and going, don't have a logo for you. This yeah. is the vision, yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it, it was. I mean, it was kind of what we asked, though, as well. And what was interesting was a lot of the other agencies just kind of presented the creative ideas there and then. And what that does is it almost creates this moment of, well, I either like this or I don't, and I'm going to make a bit of a decision on that. Regardless of the scorecard, you've still kind of got that going on in the back mm. of your head. So we really felt that they would be able to take us on the journey to get us to where we needed to. And, I mean, their credentials are insane, Um 
anyway. So you kind of know you're in good hands and you, you're working with good people. Yeah. Funny story. My One of my good friends, I went to, I actually went out to Rome uh, for the Ryder Cup with him a few, few weeks back yeah. last month. Went for dinner and we... Uh, at Kamsau, actually, one of our sponsors. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that lovely little steak dinner. Um, he lives in London, and we obviously live here. He came over, and we just had a nice little meal, four of us together, having a chat. And he just turned to me and goes, "Ah, oh, my company's just rebranded the league, you know." And I was like, "Sorry, what?" Yeah. And he uh, he works at um, there you go design work. I don't think you'll know him because he wasn't involved with the. His name's Rich. I don't know. If yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Name Matt Mason, Isabel, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he um he was talking through some of the stuff, and it was like so interesting. But the way you're They've done some. They do cool stuff. They, they go, do. They do. They go in and do. Um, don't they like make some of the stuff they do? They go into events and make the VIP section like a whole. Yeah. Be, like they're, they're not just going right. Here's a few things. Like they make you the experience of the VIP section like insane. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. And again, it all comes down from you know they looked at the insights, they looked at the research, and they kind of got ourselves to point. And and you know the brand now is something that can be considered as a lifestyle brand as much as a basketball brand mm. and that's really what we wanted to make sure that we delivered on yeah, yeah there's a really so cool there's a really cool video on the league's youtube channel which you should go check out if you haven't watched it already uh which takes you sort of behind the scenes as to what goes into um the the new rebrand so we won't repeat what it says you know in the video but uh joe you have a bit of an exclusive for us um here on the Bristol yeah. Fires podcast don't I, you yeah i thought this would put the cat amongst the pigeons a little bit so i thought it'd be kind of fun to do but i thought we got down to ultimately we went through all this kind of process um and we ultimately got down to um two logos that we presented um to a kind of steering committee if you like um which included a couple of the clubs um and other members within the league um and there was quite a lot of dis conversation and debate and i would say actually um the overriding consensus was probably people playing a little bit safe and i think between um or well, definitely within the league i think we wanted to push boundaries so i thought i'd share what that other logo looked like um and basically put the cat amongst the pigeons and I'm this is either going to bite me in the uh, behind or uh, <laughs> or uh, you know create some interesting conversation out there well hopefully you've got a sign off from Aaron Raiden on this because we're about to show <laughs> what could have been the new British Basketball <laughs> League rebrand right here on the podcast nah. uh, we, first of all we'll start by showing the final version so here's what the final final version of the uh, British Basketball League rebrand looked like there it is yeah. logo on screen it's like a big for the listener it's like a big letter b uh, the word british basketball league on the side and there's like there's there's two elements to this, isn't it there's the swoosh of the ball and yep. the, the hoop as well yeah yeah so the idea was we wanted something that was a little bit more kind of playful um if you look at any other um basketball league out there they're very literal uh it's a player or a ball pretty much every time and the ball is always looks like a basketball yeah, and there was a lot of debate about whether we were going to put lines on that ball or not as well. Uh, like I've seen a lot of talk about that yeah, online yeah, right yeah, now yeah, as well. Yeah, and there, there was, there was, and I think maybe one of the other slides you'll see are sort of the iterations of what we actually went through. So let's get that one up on screen. Here yeah. you go. So you can see uh, for for the for the um, podcast listener, go check this out on YouTube. But on the top left of your screen, you can see the how the uh, the swoosh and the hoop developed, and the B. It looks like it started with like a backboard almost to the hoop as well. Joe. Yeah, yeah, there was, I mean, and this was, I mean, there was, I'd love thousands of iterations of this thing. <laughs> um, but what we ultimately decided on was um, that this logo will end up very small and you won't really see that, the ball, in a, in a literal sense when you get it down quite small. So we decided to go for something, again, more iconic. Um, and the, the typography, the word mark, creates a little bit of a stamp of authority in the league while still being kind of playful. And mm -hmm. um, we love the fonts because they're kind of very kind of bold um, and, and, and loud as well. That's something else that we wanted to try and bring to life within it too. What, what I love is the fact that, you know, you've got like the, the logo with the text and then you've got like the badge version for when you're putting it on a polo shirt yep. or you're putting it on a cap or whatever. Yep. Uh, so it, there's different it, it, iterations of the logo, but when you see it straight away, you'll know that's the British Basketball League. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it wasn't all about the logo as well. I mean, the other thing, you know, 
the brand is well this one thing about a brand is it's not just about pictures and graphics right it's about living and breathing the philosophy and it's definitely something you know stage two for the brand for me is that actually about how can we build the philosophy into everything that we're doing as a league and all the clubs but also then how the fans are thinking and, and the experiences that we're bringing into the game um as well so it's loads more work to do on the brand this was really kind of just stage one I mean, brand is a, a word that's thrown around a lot in a in a way where people who um, try and create brand or understand brand it's very important and, and the technical term they use but I think like for the everyday person we all know when we see a brand and we think and we feel like it's good and it's nice or it, it works with us and yep. we see plenty of brands and it's, it's subconscious surely a lot of this is all within the subconscious of people who don't really go I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go do I like that do I not like that what do I like about it it's more than just general quick glances that feel good do you know what yeah, I mean yeah is that yeah. fair yeah ab absolutely there's definitely a uh, um, uh, brand is you know it's the soft this is very much the soft side of marketing right but it's the psychology it's the the emotion and the connection you make with a brand ba the, lo the logo almost is after uh, almost like an afterthought it's actually how you can build that emotive connection with your fans and the, the brand should help this is how the brand is now g going to play out and how you'll see it play out um, in various different aspects. So you've got, yeah, some of the merchandise, um, you know, the court design will look something um, like this. Again, these were conceptual ideas um, to start with. We'll have merchandise coming along fairly soon. I'm quite excited. I really want that T-shirt. Um, <laughs> um, and obviously the branding on the ball as well. Um, and also the anthem as well. You know, the anthem mm. was a big part. Again, it's the audio part of the of the brand. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm obviously a big fan of it. Um, I'm, it sounds like you're going to play. There you go, good man. Yeah, I mean, I love those horns. Um, definitely have to give a little bit of a shout out to Josh Steele and the inspiration of those. We were in the car um, driving somewhere, cannot remember for the life of me. And I said, well, if you're going to do an anthem, what are you going to do? And he said, it's got to have horns. Um, so that definitely went into the brief when we when we sent it over to the um, agency we used. They found a couple of great artists for us, uh, Lady Ice and Omo 9K, and then the producer called Kill Miami. Um, and I went up there to Manchester to see it being produced. Um, That's you know, so cool. It was it was really cool cool uh, cool experience, and got to input as well, and 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 that kind of stuff as well. Um, and being a big hip hop fan. Uh, that was like pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty good fun. It's available on Spotify and Apple Music, wherever you get your tunes yeah. as well. So you can go listen to it, download it. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't already heard it on the on the broadcast as well. Yeah. yeah. And we also every game we play it before we exactly. go into our like team lineups and stuff. So yeah. And you know, again, the part of that into your point of well, when you look at a brand you feel something. Well, it's also if you're making a cup of tea just before the game. That's a very British thing to say, isn't it? Making a cup of tea <laughs> before the game. Have a quick cup of before yeah, ball goes yeah. up. <laughs> um, you know, you hear it in the background. You know you've got to get to your seat and, and, and watch the game. And you also kind of know what you're expecting um, expecting to. Yeah. It's Amazing. So cool. I love it. Uh, it's so nice to talk about these sort of things because I think, like, what happens is people see a rebrand and unless they really engage with it, they're like, oh, I like this or I don't. And when you get into it and you talk about the reasons, there's always reasons and people yeah. need to hear that sometimes, yeah, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So. I mean, there was a lot of hard work and effort from a lot of very, very talented people. And I'm not including myself in that group to make this thing happen. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really proud of the outcome. Well, are you ready for this now, Sam? Because we've got an exclusive right here on the Bristol Flyers podcast. And this is what could have been the British Basketball League rebrand. Uh, you see it there on screen. It's Obviously, it's called Unbeatable Basketball. Joe, talk us through what we're seeing right now. So there were kind of two routes that were kind of built out from the strategy so one route was around like the flow and the motion of the sport and the other idea was about igniting the passion of the fans so we had these kind of two routes to go down and this this route was very much um the igniting the passion for the fans so the idea being that 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 ball you kind of see in the background um is an ignition point but it it's also uh kind of looks a little bit like the Union Jack. Um, so uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but we felt that this 
was one a little bit too literal and we were trying to pull ourselves away from that um and two perhaps a little bit too federation driven um and again we you know we see ourselves as a pro league um rather than a federation so we wanted to try i mean and and that's ultimately why we wanted to go with this with this other way we felt it was um we felt it the the route we took was a lot riskier and, and you know you're either going to win it or you're going to lose it on these things and i can remember uh, aaron and i having a conversation about you know putting it out there and then turning twitter off um for for a couple of hours and um, <laughs> did you uh no i didn't actually i just got a sort of sick twisted kind of <laughs> like really want to know what people are going to think about it and i think overall the feedback's been pretty good yeah like um yeah there's obviously people that aren't going to like it and i'm you know i'm happy that it divides people anyway because that just creates more conversation and that's what we need to do as a league is create more conversation um and yeah yeah i mean the amount of positive commentary i i received from it as well i think has been been brilliant yeah i think it's i think the only negative i see and i have no issue with it at all is that it's people want an acronym don't they and they don't do that anymore yeah and that's and that's fine it's just one of those things but if that's what they're arguing about mate then i think you've done a great job you know appreciate it appreciate (laughs) it and i think like the, the the rationale behind the acronym is that if people come into new fans which is again what we're trying to draw into into the league if new fans um come in and they hear bbl they don't necessarily know what that means and yes well, that's a forfeit <laughs> uh, you've got me. are we doing it we're we doing yeah. this are we doing well, it it depends what it is uh, oh no i can't believe i fell for that and you warned me too <laughs> well my friend you were warned I so deserve this. The, the league's head of, of marketing <laughs> has just slipped up on his own on on his own rebrand. <laughs> this is our this is our bucket here. Uh, you can see it. It says the acronym bucket. And the other side believe. has the former logo with a big cross <laughs> for it. Right. Do you think can we'll I let finish? you pick? Yeah, go on. Can I finish before I have to do this? Yeah, yeah. You, you finish first and then we'll pick. They're not too bad, I promise. Okay. The, okay. the hardest ones are out of the way. Early. I'm wor- I'm worried. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the reason is is because. As people come into it, if we're saying British Basketball League, people immediately understand who we are and yeah. what we want to be. Uh, and after, on that, I'm just going to pick out whatever. <laughs> if it's one that we can't do now, we'll just pick another uh, one. Okay? I think that's a good. Okay, I think I know what that one is. Okay, go with that one in your hand there. Please do that one. <laughs> you really, really want me to do yep. this one? That one there. Write a letter of apology to the British Basketball League. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is going to write a letter of apology to the British Basketball League. And the next time we record a podcast, we are going to read out his letter and we're going to read out his response. <laughs> so watch this face. Uh, we're going to hear the response from the official response from the league. I Who are we going to send that. this uh, email to, Joe? Are we going to send it to Aaron Raiden? Oh, no, it's got to come to me or Anna, I think. I, I, think, I think it should be an email to Aaron Raiden no, no, to no. apologise for... Um, Absolutely not. This is a letter... You have to write a letter <laughs> and send it in the post. <laughs> I think I think it's very okay. I think it's very good. I think it should go to someone I think it's like fair. Aaron. I think it's fair. Yeah. yeah or yeah, we can do it, it by email. Aaron. You know, we're in we're 2023 I, these I, days. I, we can do an email. I don't, I don't mind writing a handwritten letter to Aaron Raiden yeah. about how I use the three letter acronym on the <laughs> Flyers podcast. I love that. I have to apologise for, uh, for 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 doing that. That'd be great. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll run it on the Flyers podcast next yeah, time we record that. one. I love that. Um, S- sorry, Joe. It's quite all right. I mean, I <laughs> where were we? believe I did so well <laughs> for 40 minutes. I know we were right there, but then he slipped or the less. final hurdle. <laughs> I don't know how long, yeah, but yeah. Um, Joe, we talked about the rebrand. Um, there was one final game we want to play before uh, oh, we yeah. have this week's episode of the Flyers podcast, and you guys have done some uh, fan research, haven't you? Tell us more. Yeah, so I mean, again, part of what we're trying to do as a league is understand the fans, because if we can understand the fans more, it makes... It helps us in all our marketing efforts. It also helps kind of commercial conversations so that our commercial partners can understand who they're talking to on a regular basis. Um, and it helps us kind of think about how we can talk to the fans, activate them, get them excited about the game. Um, so, yeah, we did a um, fan survey and I thought it'd just be a little bit of fun. Um, we asked people, one of the first questions we asked is, who's your favourite team? So it means that we can break down like the differences between the teams Um and that kind of thing. So I thought I'd ask you guys like some of the questions and see if how close you can get to the results. See how well you know your fans, basically. But these, this went out to every fan 
of the league of yeah. every team of the league. Correct. Yeah. And, and this is and this is based on the Flyers fans' response to the survey. Just the Flyers. Yeah. This so, is just so the Flyers. We are just the Flyers. So, so we are answering what we think Flyers fans like most. I don't know what the questions are. So right, uh, are you ready? Send us through the first question, Joe. The first question is. What's the most popular computer game played by your fans? Oh, this is a tough one. Do we, do we, and are you allowed to tell us things like demographics or not? Of the people uh, that we've got to? I haven't got that information with me today. Okay. So. I'm going to go with, um, oh, Joe, you can go first. You know, uh, well, I'm going to go NBA 2K. Uh, assuming that Flyers fans will play NBA video games, right? Surely you think okay, so. Fine. I disagree because I don't think 2K is the biggest game out. I think it's going to be a much more, I'm going to think it's Fortnite. That's what I'm going with. Okay, so Joel, you got it. Hey! But Fortnite came in third. Oh wow! Uh, what second? FIFA. Yeah, oh, nice. Well, yeah, cool. Fair enough. Amazing. I know the fans well. See, the, the thing is, Joe did tell me that this isn't for this is only for people over eighteen. So actually, I should have thought of that when I did because Fortnite probably was quite yeah, big, big below yeah, that, big wasn't big it? So, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. uh, well. Right. Send us question two, Joe. Okay. Um, what percentage of fans uh, are exercising more than three times a week? I've seen our fans. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say, Sam? Yeah. I mean, that's the way Be to careful. keep your, 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 your followers on this podcast. Um, and I love our fans. So, um, 100%. Um, now, I'm going to go with 50%. I'm going to go with 65%. Wow. Uh, you're not close. Oh, uh, what? So, it's 36%. But still terrible. <laughs> yeah. We have to put out some basketball workout videos yeah. for our fans. I That's reckon. actually not a bad shot, and and that is quite honest as well, isn't it? People are just being. Yeah, you know. but I mean three. To, I mean, uh, maybe oh, oh yeah. To be fair, thinking about it now, three times a week, I was wet off. <laughs> <laughs> three times a week, crikey! Uh, right, question number three. Yeah. So, um, uh, which it, this is a bit of a weird one because okay. I thought the. F the f the first answer would be kind of a bit too easy. So, uh, which is the fourth most spectated sports by your fans? So this is the fourth most spectated. And is this live spectation or spectation? Is this just live or is this um, just, could be just on TV? Following, following spectating. The so, so here's my thought process. Right. Flyers fans are watching Flyers. So they're watching basketball. They're probably watching, they're probably watching well. Bristol City and Bristol Bears. So they're probably watching rugby and football. So it's probably not those three. So you're probably looking at something like, what else is massive in Bristol? Ice, ice hockey. Ice hockey, cricket. I reckon it's going to be ice hockey. I'm going to go cricket. Okay, you're both wrong. Oh, Eesh, what is uh, it? Tennis. Tennis. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, it's one of the big ones, isn't it? Cause yeah, it, it is. Isn't I, it? I suppose. Okay, what are the other three? Is it the three we said? Yeah, they were, yeah. yeah. Basketball, football, rugby, then tennis. I think we were thinking, obviously, because the Pitbulls are a team we have here who are loved by many, but they still only, you know, they get like 3,000 and whatever. So, um, maybe that's great. That's good to know. And there's, I bet there's loads more data as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's interesting. And it, it like I said, it helps us understand our audiences more so we can think about how we can best approach them. Well, you know, even things like, okay, well, we now know, you know, rugby and tennis are probably, we can do some really co cool crossover content with some of those um, types of audiences and that will help us pull new new fans into the into the sport. Yeah. We're really, I mean, it's not relevant for the league necessarily because it's more us, but we're really looking forward to when we have the arena here that we will put, uh, you know, games on 6 p.m. after a 3 p.m rugby game yeah. or, or, or football and and then pop them across for yeah. you know straight away it'll be so nice yeah i'm i'm looking forward to coming down and doing both of those things myself <laughs> maybe we could host some tennis in there sam yeah, yeah you never know Who knows? <laughs> you never know uh joe just before we wrap up this week's episode or this week's chat with uh, with yourself um let's talk about the future um where do you uh, what are you working on right now what's the next pl point uh, plans of action and um where do you see the league going in the next couple of years down the line uh Upwards is where I see it going. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I hope we have more broadcast deals um, in place. Um, you know, our kind of digital and social channels are growing. We're getting media, a lot more media turning up to our events and report reporting on the games. Um, new new clubs, I hope, come in. That will be a really, really exciting piece. Uh, in terms of what I'm working on now, well, look, we've obviously got our big tentpole events coming up. We've got the, the trophy um, in January. We've got the All Star, which we're bringing back, which I'm really, really yeah. excited about. I haven't even that talked one. about that yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, really, really excited about that one. Um, that's mid March. And then obviously the playoff finals um, at the O2. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of the big three things we're working on, I guess. It, more, more the kind of um, 
kind of fan facing kind of work and then behind the scenes there's a lot of work we're doing around analytics and dashboards and data um and some of the other fun stuff so you know the all-star voting we're kind of getting ready for that that will launch in january um so i'm quite excited about that one as well and getting everyone involved in, in voting for their fans so oh, i love this be good. amazing so cool. watch this space uh just finally before we let you go uh is there any exclusives any more exclusives you can give us about what's to come down further down um, the line or are you keeping very tight-lipped about that yeah i mean i think most of the stuff is relatively expected there'll likely be a few more broadcast deals will be announcing soon with any luck um you know we'll have merchandise hopefully kicking off sometime early in the year as well which i'm really excited about that and and what's coming along with that so yeah i think those are a couple of little Little tidbits. Yeah. And Lovely. The, and, the, and finally, the most important question. Mm -hmm. um, you never. You told us about you playing basketball from yep. about 10. What position are you? Uh, well, I kind of, Well, now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, 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 sideline on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, now I kind of play one or two generally. But because, I, you know, basically I grew quite tall and then stopped. Um, <laughs> I kind of played all the positions when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, Love that. Yeah. Amazing. Great stuff. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we should probably get like some kind of backroom staff scrimmage on going at some point. Are you we were talking about that actually on the drive up here or across here. Um, so yeah, well, I definitely, definitely want to get a kind of league backroom game going for sure. Did you say that's going to happen before the um, playoff final at O2? Is that what you said? I'm not sure I said he that. Just said, Joe, <laughs> did you hear that? Live on the Bristol Flyers podcast. I heard, I heard it's going to be live on Sky Sports yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big cool. one. <laughs> I'm, defi I'm definitely up for getting it organised. Yeah, great. We need to get somebody go get, getting it going for sure. That'd Buzzing. be amazing. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining us here on the Flyers podcast. Thanks for taking time out your super a busy schedule right now and uh hope you enjoy the game tonight because at the time of recording of course it's manchester giants at home yeah uh, thanks for having us guys i really appreciate it um i hope people found the kind of story of the brand interesting this is the bristol flyers podcast well sam what an interview that was uh, we've got to give a massive shout out to joe edwards for joining us uh, here on the podcast incredible can <laughs> you believe joel that he said the b the B and the L. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am so excited for him to do his forfeit, which is going to be a letter of apology to the British Basketball League CEO, Aaron Radin. Watch this space uh, because he's going to write that letter of apology this week. And hopefully if he gets a response, we will read out his response and the email, the initial uh, apology email uh, on a future episode of the Flyers podcast. So look out for that. And as we are here in the studio and we are back to this week, uh, we should probably get down to this week's news. So Sam, without further ado, it's time for us to go to this week's news. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right, here's a look at what's been going on around the British Basketball League this week. And we start with a bit of European news, Sam, because that is uh, Israeli side Hapwell Beershaver have dropped out of the European North Basketball League uh, for obvious reasons mm -hmm. uh, and have been replaced by the two uh, the two time. My note says two time. It says 20 time winners of the Danish <laughs> Basketball League back in Bears. <laughs> Back and bears come into bear country all the way down here, Jolie. No, we should probably do something around that. Yeah, Bristol bears. Bring the Bristol bears, bears in instead, shouldn't we? Only one bears in Bristol. Only one room for one bear around these parts. Isn't that right, Dan? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course, back and bears are coming down. Uh, now, they've just been eliminated, Sam, from the FIBA Europe Cup this season, which was the competition that Caledonia were in. Mm -hmm. uh, they have agreed to fill the gap. That has been left by Beer Shiva, which is amazing. Uh, such short notice, they're doing all the games that Beer Shiva would have played in. Do we know? So how does that work? So do all of the games that they played get? Why no, they didn't play any games. Uh, of course. So they haven't played a game yet. So Beer Shiva, uh, so Beer Shiva, they, they didn't play at all in the EMBL. So now. Um, back and will just come in and fulfill those games in a shorter amount of time. Well, they're going to be knackered, aren't they? Well, you never know, but they're, they're a team that's no stranger to European basketball. So they've um, they're used to having these midweek games in their schedule. Um, now they, like I say, they've just been playing in the FIBA Europe Cup this season. Uh, they're three-time semi-finalists of the FIBA Europe Cup. 
Um, and a lot of British Basketball League fans might already recognise the name Back and Bears, and that is because they faced against London Lions when London Lions were in the FIBA Europe Cup in 2022. They also, Sam, competed against Leicester Riders when they uh, were in the Basketball Champions League qualifiers in 2018. Uh, and Sam, uh, yeah, it should be really exciting. I'm really glad we managed to fill that spot. Um, it's going to be a really, really good event. It also means that um, I, I wondered if we were going to have any issues with tickets because we knew about the, um, we did know for a little while about the team um, from Israel, didn't we? Yep. So um, it's all any ticket you had for that will be just transferred over to this game, which will be absolutely fine, won't it? Yeah, and the game will take place on the very same date as the originally scheduled game against Beersheba. So it's just an opponent that's been swapped. So Tuesday, January 9th, 7.30 p.m. tip-off at the SGS Wise campus. And as you say, all previously purchased tickets and part of the three-game bundles that were previously purchased, they will be valid for this game. So mm -hmm. don't you worry uh, about that, Flyers fans. Any queries you've got, uh, you can also give our sports services uh, team a call, 0117963 Is that true? What? That number? Yeah. How do you know that? I've been working there for 10 years, <laughs> mate. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> support services, 0 do, do you Or support services at bristol-sport.co.uk. Do you call them regularly then, Joel? Is that yeah, all the time <laughs> when, I have my, when I have my queries about tickets, you know. Can't get my free press tickets for this game. <laughs> Love that, Joel. So, uh, so yeah, watch this space. Uh, and also, if you haven't got tickets for that game, you can go get them over at bristolflyers.co.uk. They are selling quickly. Uh, so watch this space. Other EMBL news, uh, Sam, is uh, our final Group A game against Svenborg Rabbits, also from Denmark. It was a double <laughs> dosage of Danish basketball in January. Uh, that game will take place on Wednesday, January 24th, which is 7pm uh, local time out in Denmark, 6pm over here in the UK. It was the same date as the originally, um, you know, the original game against Sigal Pristina, uh, just a different time. Um, but yeah, like you say, um, because they dropped out the team from Kosovo, Sigal Pristina, and replaced by Svendborg Rabbits, who, might I say, have maybe one of the best logos in all of basketball. Dan, have you seen the logo for Svendborg Rabbits, by the way? I, I frequently look at the logo <laughs> of Svendborg Rabbits. It's fantastic. Give it a quick Can Google. You get it up? Yeah, I, give it a quick Google I'll so we can get it up on the screen. It's not just a great logo, Joel. Svenborg Rabbits is an unreal name for a team. Like you know when you like you know when you like uh, start a new team and you're like, yeah, what animal should we use for our team? And you were like, oh let's find something that's fearsome, you know, bears, <laughs> lions, tigers. No one's gonna, oh yeah, let's do rabbits. Rabbit. <laughs> well, maybe uh, producer Dan might know why they've picked the rabbit because he's got to do his uh, guide to Svenborg at some point further down the line. It'll be it'll be because some sort of rabbit once was their king or something. Is that right, Dan? <laughs> well, there'll be a there'll be a statue, won't there, that you've got to go and find the rabbit. I, I did, hope anyway. Did an artist accidentally paint a rabbit on the coat of arms this time in <laughs> uh, Svenborg? <laughs> uh, of course, don't forget uh, we are back in EMBL action once again on Tuesday as Dutch side Landsted Hammers visit the Wise campus. Sam, it's hammer time. It's hammer time. Da, 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 da. What a tune. You going to play that. that in the arena, do you reckon? Oh, of course we should. Yeah, 100%. I hadn't even thought about that, Joel. Yeah, we'll get that on for sure. 100%. Should we get that as their music that they're walking out to? They probably get that a lot, they probably, they? they probably use that already for their home games, I reckon. Do you reckon? Hmm, I'd, you'd have to think so, right? Uh, Producer Dan's got the Svenborg Rabbits logo up on screen. Get up on screen, Dan. Brace yourself. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. If you're watching the video version of the podcast, you can see it in all its glory. For the podcast listener, please give this a Google right now. It is a bunny rabbit with like two floppy ears with big yellow teeth, two of them sticking out the front. Um, incredible. That That is a little it's like one, one angry rabbit. I was going to say. <laughs> angry rabbit. I was going to say. You pesky rabbit. <laughs> Svenborg rabbits need to partner with some sort of toothpaste company here, Joel. Who's <laughs> the yellowest of teeth and the reddest of eyes. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Uh, well, there's the Svenborg rabbits logo. Um, but yeah, Tuesday, December 5th, we are back in European North Basketball League action, taking on Lansted Hammers, um, f uh, the the, uh, the team from the Netherlands, which should be very, very exciting indeed. So you know what that means, Producer Dan, don't you? I do indeed. We have a guide to um, Landstead to uh, bring you. And um, producer Dan has been working hard behind the scenes to turn this one around super quickly after our game last week in the European North Basketball League. Sam, uh, Dan, how did the how did it go? Uh, pretty well, actually. Yeah, it seems like a Zwolle, which is where, the, where, where we're going to be playing in the Netherlands. Uh, lots to talk about. Um, shall we have a little listen, Sam? Without further ado, here's everything you need to know about the Landstead Hammers. Who's ready for another European adventure? 
This time we're going Dutch as Coach K's team welcome Lansted Hammers to the SGS Wise Arena for Game 4 of the ENBL journey. The Hammers have driven 500 miles to make the trip all the way from Zwolle in the Netherlands, but just what is it like in Holland's 19th biggest city? Well, great mate, why don't we have a look at the top 10 things to do for this week? At 10, it's a non-mover with the Grotter of St. Michaelskirk, the 14th century church is still standing after all this time. Up six places to number four is Dinoland Zwolle. One TripAdvisor review says you can see dinosaurs there. <laughs> And at number one, it's a new entry. Taking the top spot is Bonami Games and Computers Museum, with retro arcade games Pinball and a giant Mario hovering over you like a science experiment gone wrong. Congratulations to our number one thing to do in Zvola. We love to take a look at the local cuisine on this deep dive into our opponents, and the traditional confectionery of Zvola is Volsa Balitius. These hard-boiled sweets translate into Zvolen balls. I had that once. Terrible. History lesson now, and Zwolle's Sassenport Gate has been standing since the 1400s. The Sassenport Bridge connects you to the gate, but just over the other side of that, and a little walk if you turn left, is Burger Me. Established in 2021, they do a mountain burger for 10 euros. It looks great. Finally then, what can we expect from tonight's opponents? The Hammers are one-time winners of the Dutch Basketball League and two-time winners of the Dutch Super Cup. They've competed in the FIBA Europe Cup, so have the advantage when it comes to experience, but we have the Flyers faithful making all the noise tonight, and hopefully the boys nail this one. Get it, Sam? Nail them because uh, hammers. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> what a guy that was, producer Dan. Could be our best one yet. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed learning about their place. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Bristol, guys. Uh, Sam, right. Time for us to get through uh, some British Basketball ne League news. And I don't know if you can smell that, but it smells like beef. And I hope you've got that soundboard ready, Sam. It's time for British Basketball Beef. <laughs> Sponsored by Calvin Sal. <laughs> uh, it's time for us to get to British Basketball Beef. You got beef with this week, Joel. Is well, it not you? No, the beef's not me. It's the beef is on social media between Caledonia Gladiators and Cheshire Phoenix. Have you seen this already? I personally have not seen it. You did mention it, but I was going to keep it a secret to learn like other people learning in the podcast. Well, you're in for a treat, my friend, because the Caledonia Gladiators and the Cheshire Phoenix faced off against each other twice last weekend. And don't get me started on the league scheduling this season. Yeah. They face each other twice. <laughs> so uh, maybe, maybe you do have some beef. <laughs> they, 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 they face each other twice last weekend, both home and away. Um, and uh, the away team won on both occasions. So on Friday night, the Knicks beat the Glads 92-83. And on their final score graphic on Twitter, they posted the following. Stick that on your documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that. That is unbelievable. So obviously, Caledonia Gladiators, for reference, had their BBC Three documentary last season. Uh, and if you've watched the documentary, you'll know that they do not talk, say nice things at all uh, about the Cheshire Phoenix. <laughs> so is uh, is uh, I've not actually watched it. I've not watched it yet because I've got a lot. Oh, long mate, list go of watch that, it. I will. But is that honestly what happens on the documentary? They say some nasty things. Oh about the yeah, Knicks. there's they're like we hate Cheshire. It's a big rivalry. Obviously, they play each other in the trophy final, don't they? So. So that's the first game. So uh, Caledonia, uh, sorry, Cheshire won the first game. The second game was on Sunday where they played and Caledonia won by 10 down in Cheshire. And in their score graphic, they just repeated what the Cheshire Phoenix said, saying, stick that on your documentary with a couple of clown emojis. <laughs> Now, I don't know how I feel about this because uh, I felt I like the beef. I think the response could have had uh, a bit more thought behind it, potentially. Yeah, it's. It, it, do you know what? I see what they're trying to do, but actually they could have been way funnier, couldn't they? Yeah, I think so. But uh, I don't think the guys at Cheshire were too impressed with Caledonia's response either, Sam. Oh, dear. Because they then responded to Caledonia saying, and the award for the most original <laughs> tweet of the season so far goes to. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. I like that for me wins it. Uh, but let us know what you think. Uh, you can tweet us at Bristol Flyers. Last bit of news, Sam, before we wrap up this week's episode of the podcast. And you, Sam, my friend, have been called out on social media. Don't don't egg it up more than it has. I've not been called out personally, Joel. You haven't been called out personally, but I think this definitely refers to you. Uh, and I actually added you on Instagram after I saw this pop up on my Instagram feed at the weekend. Uh, now, the, the PA announcer at Surrey Scorchers, uh, he goes by the name 
name uh, Trickshot Lovelock on Instagram has posted this video of him making a half court shot at Surrey Sports Park. Here he is on screen behind the back from the halfway line for those listening on the podcast feed. Nothing but net. Uh, and he posted it with the caption, name another host slash MC that can do this, our wait. Well, you yeah. haven't got to wait too long because <laughs> Sam Hardy over here has been doing this for ages at Bristol Flyers home game. He's been doing it pretty much every week back in the day, Sam. I know, it's been, we've not done it for a while because it's been busy and all the rest of it. But this, in the nicest way, like a half court back, you know, backwards, isn't the most creative trick shot, y'all. <laughs> I reckon we could come up with something more. The other thing is I've noticed on the video, Dan, you can play again if you want, but on the video, the ball actually gets lost in the video. And so it could be, so watch this from the video. Uh, oh. Gone. Drop from the no. ceiling. Can we prove it's actually gone in? I can actually prove that <sighs> went in because I was at that game. That's the game against Bristol Flyers and I was sat there no, doing my Joel, half-time shush. content and it went in. Oh, I can I saw that. So, Joel, Joel you, you ruined it for me, mate. Go on, Dan. What you got? I mean, I think you're at a bit of a disadvantage here, though, Sam. His name is literally Trickshot. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, obviously he's going to be good at these things. We should need to change your name up a bit if you're going to, you know, match up to Trick Shot. What are, you, what are your suggestions, Dan, to give me, sort of like to live up to that? I don't know, like Sam, the skill, Hardy. So that's just a basic one off the top of the dome, but something like that. <laughs> we might use that, we might not. Skill zone. We probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably won't. Uh, well, that, well, that's everything of this week's news. Um, watch this space, though, because uh, we might, Sam, get you doing something this weekend, do you reckon, maybe? Yeah, let's give it a go. Give it a go, see what we can do. Watch this space. Um, I think you've got something better in that. And if you do nail it, we'll call out Trickshot Lovelock on Instagram and hopefully have a bit of competition. We'll see what happens. Uh, great stuff. And now that is it. You are now fully up to date with this week's news. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Flyers podcast. Thank you to producer Dan for pushing the buttons. Uh, thank you to Sam for joining me here in the studio. Thank you to our partners at Web Gains for sponsoring the podcast. And thank you to you at home for tuning into the podcast, because without you, we'd just be talking in the studio to no one. And thank you, Joel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, of course, big games. Good luck to Flyers this weekend in their two games against Caledonia and against uh, uh, Sheffield Sharks. Let's get back to winning ways. Uh, but until then, Sam and I will see you right here next week here on the Bristol Flyers podcast. <laughs>